What's up, folks? Sig Corpse here, and welcome back to Creative Verse. Uh, episode 11, I believe, not including um, the, the couple other little bonus ones I've been doing. Okay, so got a few things to show you, then we're going to get to work on some stuff. I've done some work with apparently a little bit of lag. Um, done some work here. I've added a bathroom. We have a bathroom. Uh, I'm still working on it a little bit. We got a shower stall. And we, you know, we got the throne. Throne, little decorations. I'm using the uh, the windows for uh, from the industrial. And then I thought these made nice countertops because it looks like tile right there, and like you know, a nice uh, kickboard down there. And then automatic shower with mineral water. So you regenerate. Yeah, I still need to get some more decorations in here. And I gotta be careful when leaving here because if I push too hard in the wrong way, it'll actually phase me right through the dang wall. Um, the other thing is down here, uh, I expanded this and added a layer of blocks beneath it because half my guys kept ending up at the bottom of the freaking ocean here. Thankfully, they can't drown. Um, but I just noticed that. There must be a collision box issue when these guys reload. And that's knocking some of them out. Um, and vines don't grow, apparently. Oh, I wonder if they grow on trees. If I hook these up to a tree, will these grow? I, I, I've been running a test just to see if they grow. So let's do this. Let's do this. Let's see if they will grow. Uh, uh, that works. Okay. So, so yeah, so I expanded this. It gives everybody more room. And the reason I suspect that is because when I added... I added a... Um, a thing, these guys, and a keepa... That's when I started having problems. So I suspect that's the case. All right, now we are off to Lagville, the spaceport. Um, I started working on a ship for a landing pad. Um, I, I've got this whole. Th it's it's so this is this is like the landing pad for the planet. It's a small, you know relatively unexplored world. That was the cute key, which is not what I wanted. Um, so, um, there's just the basics. Ooh, is that a chest over there? Was that a chest? I'm still looking for some recipes. Although I think, uh, at this point, I am... need to go, uh... Ooh, I'm not quite sure if I have that one or not. Um, I'm pretty much need to go hang out on the the lava and uh, hey, where'd you go? Um, where are you guys? How are you spawning up here? You shouldn't be spawning up here. Oh, they're not. They're spawning down there and then running up the slope. Aha! So. Welcome to our ship. Um, the idea behind this is that um, my place is like the base for, you know, the the exploration team. Um, and then we have this spaceport, and this is where we get our supplies and passengers and stuff and other scientists and whomever are coming down. So, this is a dual-purpose craft. We're going to have seating up here for passengers. Um, we've got cargo bay here. And this is the pilot's area here. So, um, wow, six of these. Outstanding. All right, I'm getting sick and tired of you bastards. Mm, sorry. I'm getting sick and tired of you bums. Okay. 
lights on? Is my light on? There it is. That's a little better. Um. So that's the idea. So the passengers, we got a, we got our ramp. Passengers come up and they will take these stairs and come up here and be able to get a seat. I'm gonna have a little. I think I'm, I'm thinking a little bar. Lying night, big Z. How the. I hate him. Um. So the this is where the passengers will be, and this is actually kind of reminiscent. You know, I live in Alaska, um, and it's kind of what this is patterned after. Um, Anchorage, we have a, a, a normal style airport, but out in the villages and the smaller towns and cities. You might have a single room, um, like this. It's just a room, and the aircraft, um, the aircraft just land and taxi up, and then they they push stairs up to it. You don't even get the whole gantry thing. They push stairs, and you walk off, and into the building you go, um. So, yeah. So we got landing struts here, you know, with, with nice supports. Um, it's a little dark under here. Uh, so this is the front landing strut, obviously. But yeah, no. So it's kind of... I'm kind of patterning this after. It's like, it's a rural world. Kind of like where I live in Alaska. Well, okay, I live in Anchorage, which... Is the largest city in Alaska, houses half the population of the state, which isn't saying a whole hell of a lot. It's about 380,000 people in Alaska, uh, in Anchorage, and there's about 780,000 in the state. So, um, you don't have a lot of folks here. So let's see, I'm going to need some... Oh, what the... Lagtastic... Oh. Let's do this. I want this. This needs to go like so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And actually... Um, most of these half slabs will actually probably come off. Um, just because of the fact that this was, this was me making an outline. Actually, probably get rid of most of these, or at least the ones up front, and that'll actually do me good because I need them. Um, the other thing I looked at is I'm gonna actually I'm starting to run out of these blocks, <laughs> um, and this project is probably gonna kill them. And these guys. Adobe bricks, okay, so a tar and obsidian rods, these aren't too hard to come by. This this is going to be a pain in the butt. Um, and then mud, I've, I've already, I don't have, a, I used a ton of adobe bricks down here in the arena. So I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do. I'm going to have to go digging. Uh, I need to find a whole ton of mud. I guess it's time to raid this stalactite layer. So, um, I want to finish this wall, and I do not want that showing. Uh, okay, maybe I'm not going to have a choice. So maybe if I do it like this, that'll be decent. Come on. Okay, that's not too bad. I can live with that. And rotate. Okay. Yeah. And then... Let's see... Like 
So, so it'll be slightly out of sync um, with these little details, but I'm I am fine with that. You see, these don't necessarily line up, but I am fine with that. Uh, I just don't need that stripe everywhere. I wish they they could have come up with. A, I wish they had continued the stripe all the way around. Um, or... Uh, given us another block that was like, like this and then the dark on the other side and that's it. Okay, so this is what's going to separate the passenger from the cargo area. <sighs> Come on. Um, oh, but like I was saying, in, in a lot of the aircraft we have around here um, serve a lot of double duty in the fact that they, they carry passengers and... Um, cargo at the same time. Most of the aircraft around here, um, especially like your Boeing 737s and stuff like that, which is about the biggest plane we get up here. Um, yeah, some of the other airlines might, like, some of the larger airlines might use uh, 747s and stuff like that, but... Um, Alrighty, okay. So, cargo area is... And then we need to figure out what we're going to do in here... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not bad, though. I like it. I like it. I like it so far. Um, and then I've got... Okay. So, but, so they, yeah, so a lot of the aircraft... I'm sorry, I apologize. I'm a little scattered today. They do double duty. Um, I guess was what I was trying to get at. And, um... Okay, so... So, how are we going to do this? Okay. But I don't want... I need to rotate it like that, because that's what I want, that. And then this needs to come this way. Yes! Um, so yeah, so they, they haul passengers, usually half cargo, half, half passengers, because a lot of the places that we have up here, um, especially during the winter, the only way to get in there is via plane. Um, you know, a lot of the coastal towns and stuff, you know, you can get, they get barges in the summer, in the, in the summer, and that's how they get, like, cars up there and stuff like that. Um... In their fuel, they get fuel barges in. So we've had some situations where some of the villages, the fuel barge hasn't been able to get in, and they've had to emergency airlift fuel into the uh, the villages, uh, so they don't run out of fuel oil and gasoline and diesel. Um, but usually, it's the fuel barge that comes in, and. Uh, I'm going to decide how I want that. Do I want this? I'm thinking... That. Because this needs to curve up a little bit, so I think that's this is where we'll do that. Right here. Um, but yeah, a lot of these villages... And I get to travel for work. Oh, I'm on, I got crouch going on. I get to travel for work, and it um, I get to visit all the all the nice, wonderful places that this state has to offer. Um, <laughs> some of them are kind of remote, uh, and uh, oops. Um, I've been to Barrow, which is the northernmost city in in, in America. Um, I've been to Tin City, 
which is the most eastern and western location in America. Um, no, that's not true. I apologize. That's not true. Alaska is the most eastern, western, and northern state in the United States. Um, and that's because the Aleutian Islands actually cro- cross, that are still part of Alaska, cross the international date line. So, and, um, so, yeah. And then Barrow, Barrow is the most northern city in the, in, in the, in the country. Um, I don't think, let me put this there, we'll pull that. Um, I don't think, I think Canada's got a few more that are a little bit northern than we are. How far do I want this passenger compartment coming from? Uh, I'm thinking that's good. Yeah, that's good. Um, that's a big passenger compartment, actually. But, uh, but yeah, I've I've managed to travel for work, and I get to see. I, I've seen, oh God, the majority of the state. Um, I've been all the way out at the end of the Aleutian chain. I've been. Um, on the Bering Strait at a place called Tin City. Um, I've been up to a place called Barter Island, which has the village of Kektovik, and I've seen polar bears um, in the flesh, which is freaky. Um, yeah, really freaky, actually. So where did I where did I knock the, notch that one in? It's right after this block. So this actually comes in here. Thank you. Um, yeah, it was really cool, but at the same time, very... I mean, you're sitting in a big old truck. I'm sitting in a, bo- a Ford F-350. You know, a big old diesel monster of a truck. Looking at a polar bear, actually, three polar bears and two babies, um that are anywhere from 12 to 14 feet tall and probably weigh upwards of about 16, 1400 pounds. I mean, they're, they're huge. They're monstrous. Um, and it's, it's freaky. It's downright freaky. Um, come on. I want... This way. Um, matter of fact, yeah, the guy I was riding with, the guy who took me out to see him, flipping, <laughs> he shut the engine off, and I'm like, "What are you doing? Turn the engine back on, please." And he's like, "Why? Relax." <laughs> um, but yeah, I was within sixty feet of him, seventy feet of him. Which you know is when you look at it, it's kind of far away. But still, when you're when you're dealing with a creature that massive, um, it 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 gets your heart pumping. I mean, it, it can get your heart pumping. Um, do I want that that way? I don't, you know what? I think I want this one this way. Um. But yeah, I mean they're gorgeous. You're wrong. They are gorgeous creatures. But um, yeah, it's kind of it's kind of scary. Um, one of the few creatures I actually have not yet seen in the wild is a walrus, and I do want to see a walrus. Um, I've just never been at the right place at the right time to see them. Um. So, they're one of the couple of the sites I visit, uh, the places I go, does have them during mating season. I just, I just never had the opportunity to actually see one. Um, but I've seen wolves, I've seen grizzly bears, I've seen black bears, I've seen um, fur seals, um, whales, orca, porpoise. You know, pretty much all the big stuff. Um, fox, uh, coyotes. We have coyotes up here. 
Um, no snakes, except in the southeast. Uh, we have no snakes in mainland Alaska, which is, um, you know, a lot of people enjoy that fact. Uh, what else do we have? Oh, we have mosquitoes. We have lots of mosquitoes. They come in two varieties, single and dual, single or twin engine. Um, that's that's the joke, uh, mainly because they are huge. Our mosquitoes are ridiculously big. Um, I mean, any mosquito you can see from 20 feet away, when it's by itself, is way too big. Um, but yeah, so we've got we've got mosquitoes. Oh boy, do we have mosquitoes! Um, we've actually found they've actually found um, caribou, um, which I've seen caribou. Uh, um, they found caribou dead from blood loss <laughs> um, because of mosquitoes. Uh, when you see the caribou in the wild, especially because they, they stick to the high areas, so the high tundra and stuff like that, they'll be, like, grazing, and then all of a sudden they'll all run. And then they'll go back to grazing. And then all of a sudden they'll all run. And then they go back to grazing. It's like, what are they doing? And, and they're running from the mosquitoes. If they don't take off every once in a while, the mosquitoes get too big a hold on them, and um, they can kill them, which is absolutely insane. That's how many, and, and I mean, so that's, you know, tens of thousands of mosquitoes probably on one animal, but, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of, you know, it's kind of freaky. Um, yeah, so, oh yeah, originally from Jersey, actually, um, joined the army uh, and, um, got stationed up here and liked it so much, never left. Um, so, and if, and if you're wondering, if anybody's wondering, and some of you may have figured this, figured this out already. My handle, Sig Corps, uh, it was because I was in the Signal Corps uh, in the Army. Uh, I did communications in the Army, and I do telecommunications now. So, that's what I do for work. And I actually still work. Uh, I work for a defense contractor now. Um, on a contract for the, uh, for the Air Force. So... But yeah, no, I, I love living up here, and that's why I'm kind of so I'm kind of getting the story for this um, for this build, for this galactic build. Um, you know, it's a rural planet, um, and you know we have the one the one base um, for exploration and all that other stuff. And oh, wait, there's a timer. Um, and then we've got this spaceport, and then we've got these trans-atmospheric crafts, and then, well, this, this is supposed to take you up to the space station. And probably what I'll do is, um, I, I'll probably put a temporary one in my base, but I'll probably, the teleporter to get to the space station will be here. So you'll have to teleport over here, come here, use the teleporter here to get to the space station. So this way, it, it kind of makes sense. You know, you use the teleporter to get to the, the star port, right? And then, say the space station's too high for the teleporter, which I know is not true, but I'm just saying it's, it's all part of the story. I found, I found that if you have a story, it helps with the build. Um, and... Um, so, yeah. That way, thank you. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's, so I'll put the teleporter in here, maybe in a closet or something, and that's how we'll get to the space station. So you have to come here to the starport, get on the ship to get to the space station. I like that. Alrighty, well that's the time we got for today, and, um, I hope you all like this. I mean, you're watching me place blocks. I get that. Um, and but you know, the little bit, you know, I, I like, uh, I love talking about Alaska and and my adventures here. Uh, and I have a lot of stories about living up here um, and being in the military up here. Um, some are not safe for younger ears, so I will uh, refrain from that. Uh, but no. 
let me know if you want to hear more. You know? Anyway, all right, folks. Sick Corp signing out. Bye now.